Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to another beautiful day here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Today is a video by popular request and we're just gonna talk to you guys about what you need to know when taking an animal to the butcher. So we're out here in the cow pasture. Today we're gonna learn a little bit, we're gonna talk a little bit about what you can expect cost-wise, what you can expect hauling-wise to haul the animal to the butcher or abattoir or slaughterhouse whichever one you want to call it and we need to talk a little bit about the timeline that you guys need to be thinking about if you're raising your own food or your own animals for your consumption or to sell off of your farm ranch or homestead so let's learn a little bit about what it's like to take a cow to the butcher all right Woo. Woo. Stony Bridge. All right, folks, welcome to the Stony Ridge. If this is your first time here, please jump in, pound that like button. I'd love to have you back. Today, we're gonna learn a little bit. There's gonna be a bunch of information. I'm gonna feed you with a fire hose. It's gonna be fun and you're gonna learn. So go back and watch this again and again if you need to. If you need to learn a little bit over and over again, you're gonna hear repetitive information here. So. You've got two types of cows that you'll probably take to the market and you guys are welcome to post comments down there if you can think of any other situation where you might take a cow to the market, to the market meaning to the butcher shop, the abattoir, or the slaughterhouse. Abattoir is a fancy word for a slaughterhouse. <laughs> so what we had was a cull cow. A cull cow was a seven year old cow that you typically would not take to the butcher shop. She was a brood cow. She was a brood cow that continued to fail at breeding. She wouldn't take or she would have a stillbirth. So this cow had a stillbirth last year. She had foot problems last year. She had foot problems this year and I just decided it was time to take her in. Her weight was somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 1600 pounds. We took her over to the butcher shop. She dressed out hanging weight at 827 pounds. That is a heavy heavy cow. That's one type of cow that you might want to take to the butcher shop, okay? The other type of cow would be a cow that you raised out yourself. So say you went to the sale barn and you bought uh, some young heifer cows or some young steer cows and you were going to raise them out. And I use cow as a broad statement as a bovine animal. We can talk about that too. Cow is a animal that is either pregnant or had a baby. Open cow is a cow that is open and is not pregnant. A pregnant cow is obviously a pregnant cow. A heifer is a cow that's never been bred. A steer is a bull without his man parts. So that's what we're talking about here, okay? Typically, you're going to take a steer to the butcher shop. You're gonna raise this steer out to be anywhere from 12 to 18 months or so. Now there are certain rules and laws that you guys need to know about uh, for making like T-bone steaks. So if a cow is older than I believe 18 months, you correct me if I'm wrong guys, correct me in the comments, if a cow is older than 18 months due to the mad cow disease situation that we had years ago, several years back, um, they will not make a T-bone steak for you. In other words, they don't want any of that nerve tissue from the backbone, from the spinal cord in your meat because that runs a higher risk of contracting mad cow disease if your cow were to have something like that. So that's something to think about. The way this worked was we took our cow, which was a cull cow, was a seven year old cow, and we took her to the butcher shop. We loaded her up on the trailer, ran her through the handling equipment, and you wanna make sure if you're medicating your animals that you read all the directions on the medications that you're giving your animals. So say you dewormed your cows a month ago, you probably don't wanna take that cow to the butcher shop at all. You need to call and establish a relationship with your local butcher shop, okay guys? With this entire crazy economy that we have right now, butcher shops are anywhere from 12 to 18 to even 24 months out. So you've got to go ahead and get an appointment established. Even if you're just now going to buy your young cow to raise out for your family's feed, or I say feed, food, <laughs> or if you are raising a cow to sell, so to potentially sell. In other words, the cow that we are processing, we're gonna sell some, we're gonna use some for ourselves, and we're gonna give some to family. 
We are taking our cow to a USDA inspected facility, and that's something that's very, very important if you plan on selling to the general public. If you and your uncle are splitting a cow, or you and your uncle and your cousin and your dad are doing fourths of a cow or thirds of a cow, then you probably don't need to worry about that. But that's something that's important. So when you make that first phone call to introduce yourself to your local abattoir, you need to establish whether that is a USDA inspected facility or not, depending on your needs needs for your beef and for your family. Now, we loaded up our cow, we took it up there to the butcher shop and we use Mitchell's, uh, Mitchell's Butchering, I guess is what it's called. It's up in Walnut Cove, North Carolina, and we're right here in North Carolina. We lucked up, guys. We called up there. They were 12 months out. We put ourselves on the waiting list, the cancellation list, and we got a call one week later. Super, super lucky. Super lucky because this cow was kind of limping around the farm. She was showing improvement but she still had problems and we wanted to go ahead and make her into hamburger. Now, if you've got a young cow, a young steer, you may want to make your steaks and all your different cuts of meat. If you've got an older cow like this, like we're processing, we're going to make about 90% hamburger. The reason we're making about 90% hamburger is because an older cow is going to be tougher. The younger cow is going to be a better tasting cow. There's tons of research out there, so do your research on the age of the cow that you want to have processed, if you want veal or whatever it is that you want. Now all this would apply to a cow or to a pig or to a sheep or to a goat. So think about the age of the cow and that will determine a lot of times the tenderness of an animal. You don't want to butcher a 25 year old cow. It's not going to be very tender. It's not going to be that good. So we've touched on what type of cow you might take to the butcher shop. Now let's talk about the process of taking them to the butcher shop and the cost of all this. So you're going to load the cow up on the trailer. If you don't have a trailer, then you're going to have to hire somebody to haul that cow for you. You could probably hire somebody to haul a cow for, I don't know, 150 bucks, something like that, or have a family member or have your own truck and trailer or borrow a truck and trailer. So we took our truck, our trailer and our cow up to the butcher shop. The butcher shop charges or the abattoir, we're using the abattoir, charges around $70 to dispatch the cow. That is to kill the cow, okay? That's just plain and simple. This cow will be walking, it will be on hoof, and it will not be on hoof. It will be hanging very, very shortly. Now, something you also need to know is that most butcher shops will not take a cow that can't get up and walk off the trailer. So if you've got a sick cow, I say sick, injured, uh, cull cow that just can't get up, you're probably not gonna be able to take that cow to the butcher shop. Now, if you're taking that cow and having a vet take a look at it and they're giving it antibiotics and medications, you're probably not gonna want to take that cow to the butcher shop. If you've just wormed that cow, you don't wanna take that cow to the butcher shop. So heed the warnings on any medication that you might have given your cow. It costs $70 to dispatch the cow. It costs 92 cents per pound of hanging weight for this cow. So this cow came in, it was around 1,200 to 1,600 total pounds. The hanging weight was 827 pounds. There is your base price between 90, 92, 95 cents per pound of hanging weight. Now there are certain upgrades that you can make and you get to pick how much you want in hamburger, how much you want in steaks, how much you want in ribeyes, do you want T-bones? And again, there are some age restrictions on the T-bones. You guys can do the research. Post a comment down there if you already know that. So you decide what cuts that you want and no matter what cuts you want, it's still that 92 to 95 cents per pound until you get into more processing. So we chose to do several different things with this cow make a lot of hamburger. If the steaks were still good on this older cow, then we wanted to go ahead and get some steaks, brisket, everything. Oxtail, which is the tail of the cow, the tongue, they're gonna ask you all sorts of stuff. Are there any organ meats that you'd like to keep? Do you wanna keep the liver? Do you wanna keep the stomach? Do you, what do you want to keep? They're gonna ask you all of these questions, guys, and there's gonna be an upcharge for everything that you wanna keep. The more the butcher has to handle your meat, the more expensive it's going to be. So they have a tenderizing machine, so you can cut off like flank steaks and steaks that aren't quite as good or cuts of meat that aren't quite as good, and they run it through a tenderizer. That's gonna cost you just a little bit more. You're gonna have different values established, so maybe $16 a pound for ribeye steaks, maybe $5.75 per pound for 
hamburger. So you gotta think about that. There is value here for sure. And there is value in taking your animal to a USDA inspected facility, both in the cleanliness department and in the resale department. So that's something that you really, really need to think of. Some butcher shops offer sausage, so you can have kielbasa sausages made. So we had about 50 pounds of our cow turned into sausage. Some of these butcher shops will have an upcharge, so you can have your meat ground in a hamburger, it stays in that base cost. If you wanna have your hamburger patties patted out for you and they're all frozen together, expect to pay an upcharge. Again, over a dollar, maybe a dollar five, dollar ten per pound. The more seasoning, so for the kielbasa sausage, I think it was a dollar and nine cents per pound to take my beef and to make beef sausage. And that's for handling the meat and putting seasoning in there. So these are all things that you really need to think about, guys. You're gonna go back to the butcher shop after about two or three weeks, this meat is gonna hang in the cooler and age for about two to three weeks. Then they're gonna go ahead and process it. They're gonna call you back and what you wanna look for in your meat processor is whether they put it in vacuum sealed bags. You want stuff that's gonna last for two to three years if you possibly can. Most of the time, if you're going to a good butcher shop, a good abattoir, a good slaughterhouse, you're gonna experience a nicely packaged piece of beef that's gonna last in the freezer for one to two to maybe even three years. So it's something that you really need to think about. Don't just go to a butcher shop that processes your meat and wraps it in foil uh, or uh, cellophane, because it's not gonna last in the freezer. It's gonna last about six months. If you got 827 pounds of meat, it's just not gonna last. So it's either gotta go really quickly or it's gotta be packaged appropriately. Again, a USDA inspected facility for sure. Now, there are a few other upcharges that you need to think about and a few other things that you need to think about. They're gonna ask you whether you wanna keep the bones. Well, obviously we wanna keep the bones because we want dog bones. They're gonna ask you about and, and also not only just dog bones, to make our own beef stock, our, chick, our beef stock, our chicken stock, anything that you can cook bones down and make beef stock, beef broth for, using on that Traeger grill later on when you get ready to cook a brisket. So think about that. If you wanna make stock for making soup in the winter time, you wanna keep your bones. In my opinion, you wanna keep your bones. So that's part of that hanging weight and you're being charged for it anyway. They might as well not throw it away. You can use it on your place. So we talked about choosing your cow. We've talked about loading the cow up and taking it to the butcher. We've talked about the price of what it costs, $70 for the kill fee and 92, 92 cents per pound is what my butcher is charging me. Now this price could fluctuate depending on the seasons and depending on demand. So you really really want to think about that. We've also talked about what you want to keep, what organ meats you want to keep, what cuts of beef you want to keep, how thick your steaks are going to be. They're going to ask you all these questions. There's going to be a bombardment of questions that come firing at you. So you want to be prepared to answer those questions in the most appropriate manner. Again, with an older cow like what we're processing, probably are just gonna get about 90% hamburger and we'll get some of the other cuts. With a younger cow, like a young steer that you've raised out, you're gonna get all these different cuts. So you need to be prepared when you get to the butcher shop to tell them exactly what cuts of meat. You also need to be prepared that it's gonna take two to three weeks to have this animal processed. You also need to be prepared that it's gonna take up to a year for you to get into the butcher shop for you to get your animal on the schedule at the butcher shop. This could take that animal over that 18 month mark and cause your animal and your food to be tougher. So you need to plan way, way ahead, guys, if you're considering raising your own food or if you're starting a small farm or homestead and you're wanting to start selling beef off your place. So these are all little considerations that you need to have. So the cow's been there for two to three weeks. You're gonna get a phone call. You better have your ducks in a row. So you get your phone call, you take a bunch of totes up there and you start going to meet the people that are buying your beef. And you wanna drive to those people or have them all meet you right on the farm and get that beef before you have to put it in the freezer. So get it scheduled with those folks if you're selling beef or if you've got family that's splitting the beef with you, get that all settled too. Let everybody know, foster good communication in this entire uh, 
in this entire process and i tell you you won't regret it guys guys i hope you enjoyed this video please pound the like button subscribe to the channel this is just some of the information that you're going to find here on the stony ridge farm as i learn i'll teach you and we'll all learn together and have some fun here on the farm thanks a lot we'll see you next time on the stony ridge i gotta go move the cows all right?